Hi, this is Lara Zakaria, and I want to talk to you today about the role of zinc in kidney health. I think we often think of um, using zinc to help boost the immune system, um, especially if you've got um, a cold that's lingering, or maybe you're using it to shorten the duration of a cold. But I think that beyond that, I think we often forget that zinc actually has a lot of different roles today to play in a lot of different biochemical functions. Uh, particularly today, we're going to focus on the parts that have to do with kidney health. So let's dive in. So first of all, let's talk about all those biochemical reactions. So zinc is implicated in more than a half a dozen different biochemical reactions, actually probably more than that. Um, things like glycolysis, which is energetic breakdown and conversion of glucose into energy. Um, protein breakdown and utilizing that for energy. Uh, bone formation, and uh, we often think of calcium and vitamin D, but we forget that zinc actually plays a role in that, along with some other key minerals as well. Uh, DNA metabolism, alcohol metabolism, it's actually implicated in angiotensin conversion, meaning that it might play a role as well in blood pressure management. So we have to think about that when we're thinking about kidney disease, of course, because that's one of the risk factors in kidney disease progression. Uh, heme biosynthesis, um, it's actually a process uh, that's really important for actually delivering oxygen and um, nutrient supplies throughout the body. And it has a role as an antioxidant protecting us from oxidative stress or reactive oxidant species as well that can um, promote inflammation and damage. So let's talk a little bit more detail about all of that and how that's specifically implicated and what that means for kidney disease patients. So first of all, let's talk about deficiency and why something someone might be deficient in zinc. Uh, to do that, we have to talk about absorption. So uh, it's, a, it's a nutrient that's absorbed from the small intestines through transporters. You can think of transporters as gatekeepers or as a doorway. Um, that um, help to shuttle the zinc in from the inside the stomach through to systemic absorption. Now, there's a few factors that can impact that. One would be genetics. Uh, you just might have genetics that you don't have as many transporters or they don't work as efficiently, and that will certainly impact the ability for you to grab that zinc from, from your food. Uh, another big impact and probably even more significant is actually uh, maldigestion or malabsorption from your diet to begin with. So things like having low stomach acidity or maybe not producing sufficient digestive enzymes so that you could adequately break down your foods and get the nutrients out and into circulation will have a pretty big impact. And then of course diet, if you don't have a healthy diet or one that's uh, particularly rich in zinc sources, then that's obviously going to impact your circulating amounts of zinc. So what are some of the things that we see, um, particularly in kidney patients that impact their health, their kidney health? Uh, well, one, use of medications like PPIs or antacids are used to control GERD or um, stomach symptoms. So things like omeprazole, pantoprazole, Tums even, or using things like um, ranitidine or uh, Zantac. Those are um, going to reduce your stomach acid and they're gonna reduce your ability to grab some of that zinc and actually absorb it well. Um, other medications that can deplete zinc include ACE inhibitors, which are very commonly used antihypertensives in kidney disease patients. Certain diuretics like loop diuretics, for example, uh, steroids um, like hydrocortisone, um, cortisone, and the use of certain antibiotics. Um, now, how much these factors might impact your zinc levels has to do with a lot of various factors. For example, what's your diet like? What's your physical need? How much zinc does your body actually need to function optimally from day to day? How long have you been on some of these medications um, and uh, what dosage you're on? So there's a, a lot of various factors that we have to consider um, when we're considering the impact of um, these external factors on zinc need. Um, so within uh, the context of kidney disease, uh, one of the main factors where zinc plays a role is inflammation. As I'd mentioned earlier, um, zinc does play a role in your balance of your immune system. And just like you might get sick or get more frequent colds when you have zinc deficiency, it can actually also cause this imbalance in the immune system that causes this hyperactivity of this arm of the immune system. It's kind of like a domino effect that then results in damage to um, the kidney. Um, it's actually been implicated in cases of IgA nephropathy, which is a specific kind of autoimmune kidney disease. 
And we'll see in a minute how it's also tied to cardiovascular disease as well. Um, now, that whole inflammatory cascade can be dampened by um, this process called, um, well, the, the process is, is, uses superoxide dimutase, which is an enzyme or SOD. And uh, the catch is that it needs zinc in order to uh, function. And so a zinc deficiency not only will kind of create this cascade, but also uh, keep, puts us in a position where we're not fully able to turn it off. Um, zinc actually deficiency has also even been implicated in the impact of heavy metal toxicity, particularly from lead and iron. So not having enough zinc can actually put you at higher risk for uh, toxicity from those particular from those two metals on top of the inflammatory assault that causes damage to the kidney. You can see how that kind of plays into a perfect storm of causing some uh, kidney damage. Um, from the perspective of, of the other risk factors for kidney disease, hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, um, some of these start to interplay and overlap with each other. So for example, as we saw that zinc is implicated in metabolic functions like utilizing glucose to make energy and glycolysis, uh, it also has been shown that it's related to insulin sensitivity. So um, depletions of zinc are associated with insulin resistance and blood sugar dysregulation too. So there's an impact there um, or a relationship there with diabetes risk. That same inflammatory cascade that may cause kidney damage can also damage the cardiovascular system and might have some implications in terms of uh, damaging some of the vasculature and the heart muscles, et cetera, which then pushes that progression of the kidney disease um, as well. And um, hypertension, which I alluded to earlier, uh, if, if zinc has this role in some of the, um, in angiotensin in particular, as we know, how it impacts blood pressure can then um, transiently impact the progression of kidney disease. So it, it kind of sits centrally to a lot of different factors that impact um, your risk for progression of kidney disease. So let's talk a little bit about some of the food sources of zinc. Um, it happens to be primarily rich in um, in animal sources. There are some vegetarian sources uh, that have good zinc, but generally speaking, the zinc sources tend to be a little bit higher. So things like red meat, organ meats in particular, shellfish, those are great sources of zinc. Um, nuts and seeds um, are also great options. Whole grains are also good options, but they do have to be a whole grain and not a processed grain, so no cereals or breads or anything like that, um, because those do lose their nutrient content once they're kind of go through that process. Now, because vegetarian sources tend to be lower in zinc, vegetarians are at higher risk for zinc deficiency. So if you are a vegetarian, then you'll want to keep an eye on your zinc levels, and you might need to uh, supplement as needed. Um, so I do actually go into a lot more detail on this topic in the blog on in kidney. So if you want to um, find out a little bit more, I talk a little bit more about the food sourcing, um, and I go into a lot more detail about the biochemistry and uh, the references uh, are listed in there where I'm getting that information from. So if you want to dive a little bit deeper, I encourage you to go on over to inkidney.com and visit the blog and check it out. And I'd love to hear your comments and uh, let me know what you thought of this and uh, what your thoughts are. If you've changed your mind about zinc, maybe now you think zinc is, uh, is even more important than you thought it was before. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy.